Hey guys, this is Juan from Team Sketch React, and today I'm going to do something a bit different. Uh, I'm not going to talk about Sketch to React, but I'm going to give you uh, my greatest uh, and best key shape tips. Uh, let me just translate this Juan's uh, greatest, or maybe awesome, awesome key shape tips. So, what is key shape? Key shape is a lightweight vector based animation app for Mac. Uh, it exports directly to code, which is awesome. Uh, you know, everything that you do inside key shape uh, is code. Uh, you can, via a plugin, uh, that is made by the makers of Keyshape. You can import and export Lottie files, which is a hugely uh, popular animation file format. Uh, it's, you have a very easy SVG import since this is a vector based tool. Uh, you can edit all your shapes. Uh, it's actually really good. Uh, and if you compare this to like After Effects, for example, or Haiku, uh, it's really easy to learn. Uh, it reminds me of early, early versions of Flash, uh, actually, uh, and that is not a bad thing. It's much easier than Flash, and it's really, really affordable. Uh, it, it's like you buy it from the Mac App Store, and it costs like nothing. Uh, so I have a couple of tips here, things that I have stumbled upon when working with Keyshape and that actually irritated me and like I need to share these tips. Uh, the first thing is this one. It's called Object Tree Location. Uh, when you first start up Keyshape it actually looks like this. Let me show you. This is the default view of Keyshape and this tree here, the Object Tree is actually down here and this is one of the most important things in the app so the first my first tip is change this to left object relocation left and this makes it if we look in on uh, an open animation here it looks more like uh, sketch and figma uh, and after effects also like you have everything your, your layers here to the left which is great uh, that was my first tip. My second tip is there are, you have a lot of really great animation uh, curves, presets inside of Keyshape. Uh, it's the, you have all of these uh, things that actually you, you, you don't have in After Effects by default. You can, there are commercial plugins for After Effects for uh, amazing curves, curve editors. But the, the pre-built curves in After Effects are very, very uh, rudimentary. So you have a couple of really great ones here. And another awesome thing, it's really easy to actually save your own presets. So you just actually uh, save them by pressing the plus sign there and just uh, give them a great name. And another tip uh, about uh, using animation curves is that uh, once you found one that you really like uh, for your animation, reuse it again and again inside your same animation. It creates a smoother uh, animation, actually. The end results will be smoother. Uh, my third uh, tip is the Lottie plugin. Uh, and I will share this uh, presentation with you guys. Uh, this this is a Figma file, so everything that has the line, a line here, it's a uh, it's a link. So uh, I have a direct link here to the to the plugin here, and if you uh, press here, you come to the LottieFiles.com uh, site where you can download uh, Lottie animations as JSON and import them into Keyshape. And of course, you can also export things to Lottie, which is great. Uh, and though you I need to understand that uh, almost everything on LottieFiles.com is actually built in After Effects. And After Effects has 
more advanced uh, animation things like uh, 3D layer rotation stuff like that. So some things will not work uh, in the in the import, uh, but uh, most things work, and you actually can uh, just adjust small things. You get a lot of things for free by importing already done um, Lotifies. Uh, my fourth tip is uh, keeping check of the anchors. You use the transform tool. Uh, let me show you. Uh, this is vital. For example, I have something I imported yesterday for uh, for this very tutorial. Uh, let me find it here, for example. So this is uh, just an SVG exported from Sketch. And if you press the F uh, shortcut, this is the transform tool you see here. You can see that the anchors are everywhere. So the anchor point is there. Uh, you actually have a shortcut, not shortcut, but a, a quick tip here is to go here to transform and press here, uh, center the anchor point. Um, so that you have the thing at least at starting with in the center of your shapes uh, because when you start animating and you have the anchor point over here it's going to look really really weird uh, so this is a great tip uh, i wish there were a script that did this for me on import but uh, actually it doesn't take so much time to just check your anchor points keep them in check very important uh, okay, uh, another tip, my fifth tip here is use the stroke-offset uh, technique, animation technique. What is stroke-offset? This is the thing you see here, it's uh, a very popular animation effect. Um, you have a shape, it looks looked like this from the beginning, and then you apply the stroke-offset um, animation to it and you get this very nice drawing of your shape it draw, draws the shape like that really nice and very popular and actually extremely easy to use what you do is that you actually go to advanced stroke here and here you have something called total path length and here you have the total path length and you take this value and you enter it here and then also to get it to zero you enter the whole value here you offset the value with the total path length and then by jumping out and adding a keyframe and pressing uh, adding zero value zero it actually draws it out so this is super simple and very effective and also, uh, regarding this, uh, let me just check this out. This is, um, let me just dissect this animation here. Let me see what the points are. Yeah, I found it. So this one is, is a great tip actually. Uh, this, uh, there's something called object here and set start node. So if you, uh, for example, uh, it's a bit difficult to see, but if we have our shape here, and then you take the um, no tool, you actually see here, let me see, let me zoom in here. This, there's a triangle. That means this is the starting node for the animation. So say that I want to change the start node. So the start node does that it starts animating from that place. So say that I wanted to draw it from here instead, from this place, I just select that node, go to object and set start node and voila, it will animate from there. So this is a very great tip that I actually didn't have in my presentation. So uh, you got that one for free, bonus, uh, like that. Or for example, uh, to clarify again, Let's take that one, say that we want it to draw from here. Again, 
I wonder if I can right click on it. Uh, did, did it? No, I can't. So I go object, set start node, and it will draw from there. Boom, nice. Okay, back to my presentation. Ah, okay, so the, the, uh, another awesome thing here. I actually created an animated uh, alphabet a couple of years ago, and you have the link here. Uh, also animated icons. Uh, you have the key shape source file, so you can... Uh, this, this one is included. Uh, uh, so just press it and be happy. So, so how do you get things from uh, Sketch or Figma or XD um, or whatever to key shape? You export your thing as an SVG. So that's it. Then you just drag drop the SVG file on the key shape icon or you just go to key shape and press open. Um, another great tip is uh, you need to use unique layer names for your animations for the, for the paths, the shapes that are animated. Uh, because if you have several animations on your web page or app page that have, have the same name, the layer names, uh, something will break. Uh, it's also easier for debugging when you when things just don't work. Uh, and speaking of debugging, uh, in Keyshape you have a great thing here. You get here the log. Uh, sometimes when you start doing stuff, uh, more advanced things, it will come up a little warning here saying that mm -hmm, that thing is not available in that browser here, for example. Keyshape cannot display SVG filters, only CSS shorthand filters are supported. So this one is really great uh, also. Uh, so that about the layer names, very important. Keep your things neat and nice. You also have a huge amount of export abilities from Keyshape. You can export as Lottie, as CSS, as Keyshape JS. That is the, the, the file format. It's just, it's actually only a bit of JavaScript code inside the SVG. And it, uh, that is, that's the one I have found uh, works with older browsers. Really good. You can also export GIFs for your prototypes uh, to, for Figma, for example, to insert the animation. Um, also, another tip, you can preview, preview things in your browser by pressing the little icon over there. And of course, you can choose uh, which browser uh, whichever browser you prefer. You go here and you can you have your browsers there. You can also um, preview the file format and see how it looks and behaves. Uh, another great tip is uh, choosing if your animation is going to be responsive or not. You do that the, in the document dimensions here. Document place, you go up here, press there, and here you choose, will it be one-to-one -one or is it responsive? Really easy. Uh, also, if you want to have smoother animations, uh, I, I usually turn off snapping. Uh, so if you're doing like uh, shape animations and morphings and stuff like that, uh, snapping is usually a bad thing. But when you're aligning things on your canvas, uh, snapping is great. Uh, that's it. That was my key shape tips. And I hope uh, you had a great time. I had a great time. Cheers, guys. Monday morning is never good.